to my sisters and brothers. It's good to, to be here and to feel and look like we're in church. Um, I struggle when I have to address the screen. And sometimes all I see is a name, blank screen or an avatar or something like that. But it's good to be looking in the face of real people <laughs> like myself and so we i take it that you're all hearing me right yeah. um as we have it here on screen our scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12. Despite the fact that all we can read the week before, I was looking at Matthew chapter 21. But this is how the Spirit works. I would like to read, if you don't mind, John chapter 12. Verse 12. The next day, now if you go back to the verse 1, you'll notice it begins six days before the parcel. And now John says the next day after the sixth day, which is Sunday. Right? Um, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And believe it or not, this was the first visit to Jerusalem. As an adult. He avoided Jerusalem for obvious reasons. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. And the word Hosanna, and as used in the Hebrew Bible, means Lord, save us. But it had grown to be just Hosanna. Just like how back home in Jamaica, we would say, and maybe I don't have to do that in Trinidad. Hooray! Mm -hmm. Like he's a jolly good fellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or goodbye. Originally, goodbye means God be with, it, with us. But this is the contraction, goodbye. So the contraction of the phrase, the Lord save us, is for that. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is already read for us. It comes out of Psalm 118. Okay, when I'm finished reading, I just do the benediction. If I continue like this. Then he says, they said, Blessed is the king of Israel. Which is another quotation. It appears as if it's the same, but it is another. And we will look at that later on. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written. Another quotation. Don't be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is come, seated on a donkey's coat. At first, the disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was born did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him 
when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead. Continue to spread the word. Good job. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said one to another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look, the whole world has gone after him. And if we read on further, we we'll notice that these religious people decided that well, we're not only going to kill Jesus, but we're going to kill ourselves. Because these two people are making us look bad. Because we failed to do what Jesus did. We failed to do what Lazarus did. And so they felt that and decided that they would do so. So we're going to look at this passage all over again and learn what lessons we can from what is called Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday simply because John said that the people took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting for Sam. If we were to look at the four Gospels, we would come to the conclusion that Palm Sunday is one of the most prominent events in the Gospels. Whereas there are not many events that are recorded in all four Gospels, this one is recorded in all four which I think makes it prominent and important. And that's why we are pausing today to learn what we can from it. It is, in my words, an important milestone. And a milestone is a significant event or stage in the life of a person. And what I see here is what I would describe as something hidden in plain sight. The emphasis that is being made here, what Jesus is demonstrating with an exclamation mark is a concept that we see throughout the Gospels. But like the, the verse says, the very disciples were with him every day. Did not understand. The crowd did not understand. And you will see that one of the reasons why Jesus did what he did is from the donkey. A donkey's coat and rolled it into Jerusalem. That I did not understand. Although it was hidden in plain sight. Like for some of us, we have our glasses on our face and we're looking for it. <laughs> plain sight. We're looking for it in plain sight. We went to memorial service for one of my siblings and my, I don't like the term sister in law with my brother's wife. My son Barry was in total grief because she can't find her prescription medication. And she traveled all the way from Canada to the that. When she went back, her sister sitting on her dresser in our room in plain sight. 
this concept of kingship, this concept of the kingdom of God, is all over in the teachings of Jesus. But even those who were close to him didn't understand it. They didn't understand it because they had their own presupposition, their own assumption. And assumptions are sometimes wrong. But we hold them to it with their life. And we even make it into a tradition. For instance, remember the wise men? When they came to Jerusalem, what were they asking for? They wanted to see this child who is born king of the Jews. Herod was shocked that he thought he was the only king. And so he called the people who know the Hebrew scriptures. Well, these people have drained it all away. Miles to meet this king of the Jews. What does the scripture say? And they turn to Micah, and Micah says, it's going to be in Bethlehem. And although Bethlehem, you are the least among the tribes or villages or whatever, yet you're going to produce a ruler. So they said, well, you come to the wrong place. You have to go to, to Bethlehem. Right there in scripture. But even before that, you remember the angel who appeared to Mary. One of the things he said was, the one who is going to be born of you, he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign. Opening song this morning is Jesus reign. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, and, and as we read through the scriptures, we see glimpses of this. And not just faint glimpses, sometimes bold face glimpses of this. Like, for instance, we hear him saying in one place on one occasion, the Son of Man is Lord also on the summer. And in the same breath, he says he is greater than the temple. And we see him speaking to the wind and the waves, demonstrating that he has authority and power over even nature. And then we are done about this verse and saying, Oh, 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 don't give me any credit. The, 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 the one I'm announcing is greater than me. In fact, he is before me, which is sort of strange. And he's so great that I'm not even qualified to become his slave, his son. And we see this going through the scriptures. They didn't fully understand. They didn't understand. So, the beginning of the week that would lead up to Passover, he said, Well, this is an occasion for me to demonstrate to them who I am. But I'm not just a carpenter's son, but I'm more than a prophet. But I am Israel's king. And I am the king of kings and the Lord of kings. And so we have what we call Palm Sunday. If we look at the four Gospels, we find that they are striking similarities. First of all, Jesus is greeted as a king. This is what we read in all the Gospels. People are breaking down branches and taking out their cloak and spreading it on the ground and putting their cloak on, the, the disciples put their cloak on the animal 
and it is one big celebration. <laughs> Greeting Jesus because he is arriving in David's city. He's arriving in Zion, the holy city, city of the great king. We read all four gospels. The crowd waving branches. The crowd showed words from Psalm 118, from Zechariah 9, verse 9. But only John separated the quotation from Zechariah and point out Zephaniah chapter 3, 15, 17, which we will look at. When he said, when they said, King of Israel, it is easy to say that it is the same Psalm 118, or it is Zachariah 9. But let's look at it. Um, let's look at it briefly, but then come back up to it. Some of us can't even find Zephaniah. I can't read this, but it is right here. Are you want to read it? Sure. No, go ahead. I'm not going to back on it. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any arm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with sin. All right, verse 15. The Lord, the King of Israel, and that's what John heard and included it in the short of attribution, the King of Israel. But John's account is unique. It is, first of all, briefer. He doesn't tell us about the arrangement to get the animal and the disciples going to fetch the animal and to bring it to, to the Lord Jesus. He does, in fact, he says he found a donkey as if there was no preparation that like the donkey was by the roadside or what. Because for him, that's not important. You see, and, and this is this 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 is what happened. Everybody sees things differently. And sometimes you see what you're looking for. And so what you're looking for, you don't see. For me. If I didn't put something down, I can't find it. It's not a steering in the face, but I can't. But if I put it down, I know exactly where to go and I look for it. So John was brief for, but precise. John's account is a distillation. You know, you break things down to what you want. Exposing the essentials, which are two the behavior of the crowd. And you notice how many times he's mentioned in the crowd here. And he tells you about the crowd more than the others. How the crowd is, who, who are the people in the crowd? These are the people who are there when Lazarus was raised, so you have to go all the way back to Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And the people who heard, people who came to Jerusalem for Passover, who heard that a crowd is coming. So there was a crowd before him and a crowd behind him, the crowd leading the way, 
And that is very impressive. Because in the crowd, we see potential disciples. And then there's a crowd following him. Then, and they think that, well, this is the time. The Maccabees have failed. The Zealots have failed. Failed, and there are different zealots mentioned in the Bible who decide to take down the Roman Empire, the Roman domination. But they have failed. The Maccabeans they succeeded to a point, but then they fizzled out, and eventually the one survivor he became just like the oppressors. So they thought, all right, now this is the real sign. This is the real deliverer. And so he's going to Jerusalem. He has stayed out of Jerusalem. He's going to the, Now we're going to have the confrontation. It's going to happen. And so they were hailing him before it happened. They were behaving like how they welcomed Solomon when he was coronated. Like how they welcomed Jehu when he was they got palm branches and they're waving it because branches for palm branches is what you use to welcome and declare your vic a victor. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were ready. But then we also see Jesus' response. And John presents Jesus' response as a corrective. Jesus is saying, you guys didn't get it. You don't understand it. You don't understand who I am. Because they saw him as a warrior coming to use violence to bring down the wicked oppressor. He is going to Jerusalem. He's not going to Jerusalem to be crowned king because he's already king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When his father said in Psalm 2, You are my beloved son in whom I will please, we ignore, you see, the scripture that said, I have installed my king in Zion. So when Jesus offered himself, he was crowned king of Zion, God's king. But N.T. Wright says God became king. And so he had to correct it. Because if he didn't correct it, and he, and he did, they, they still wouldn't understand. It would confuse him more. Because he's not marching on to a throne. He's marching on to the cross. He's marching on to die. And he told them. He said, you guys. And this is why, for instance, what Zechariah, the word Zechariah, Zechariah used the word rejoice. He chained rejoice to do not be afraid. A confrontation is going to happen that you're, you're going to cause fear. But don't be afraid. I'm going to come out as a victor. Just like what he said to Pilate. He said, boy, you're, you're fooling yourself. I have power to lay it on my life. I have power to take it up again. Don't you think you have power over me? I'm the one with the power. Nobody's going to take my life from me. I'm going to lay it down myself. And so he had to correct it. But John also alone states that it happened on a Sunday. And I pointed that already. Six days before, then the next day. Of course, what John records in the opening of the chapter, 
It's very important that you refer to it. The anointing of his body. I'm hearing. Did you remember he said, leave her alone. Because this perfume that she's pouring on my feet. See, it's, it's, it's been very strange. I was like, what is hidden from the wise and prudent? He is revealed to influence of all the persons you think would understand. Mary would not understand it, Mary, but she understood. So she went and stored up one year's, you one year's income to buy this perfume to anoint the body of Jesus. As, as, as bold and as rash and, and as I don't know how to describe him, but his name is Peter. He will never understand. But Mary understood. And those people who know me know how, how concerned I am about how we abuse, or well, women are abused, but here is a woman who understood and anointed the feet of Jesus, and Jesus recognized and said, I know that the gospel is being preached. She's going to be mentioned, mm -hmm. because what she did is an outstanding, the outstanding yes, because none of his disciples did it. For Nicodemus and Joseph waited until he died. But she, because that work is a working class person, and she save up our money and save up our money and save up our money. What are you saving it for? Because when Jesus died, I want to be able to anoint his body for their death. So, John's uniqueness is also seen in the fact, and I mentioned this already, that he's the only one who talk about palm branches, palm palms. Because I think John is saying that people think that this is a national hero. They were thinking nationalistically. They were thinking spiritually. They were thinking about sin. They forgot that they, well, maybe they, 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 they were not privy to what the angels say, shall call his name Jesus, they shall save his people from their sins. They were only thinking of the oppression of the Romans. And of course, who wouldn't want to be set free? Mm -hmm. From oppression. But Jesus was looking deeper and further and wider than that. Night. So in second after the twelve seven, we read about funds, palms, and in first after the thirteen fifty one, praise and some branches used to celebrate national triumph and victory. That's the significant part. And that's what they had in their mind. That this is another Maccabean revolution coming up. And they want to be a part of it. But Jesus' response was to correct that. Because that was about his mission. He didn't come to bring a sword to the fight. He came to lay down his life as an offering for sin. So he corrected the misunderstanding of the crowd in their triumphalistic expressions. 
This is not a political thing. He worked that out to, and, 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 and the Jews thought so. The Jews thought that if this man popularity grows, then the Romans are going to think that there is a movement to, to bring them down. And they're going to start to kill us off. So we might as well sacrifice one man life for all of us. So let's kill him and get him out of the way and stop this movement. They were focusing, and this is typical, on the power and the glory, while discounting the suffering and death that is also essential. Because Jesus was going to Jerusalem to die. He told him, he said, the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem to be betrayed and arrested. They're going to spit on him. They're going to mock him. They're going to kill him. But he didn't stop there. And the third day he's going to rise again. I wish they had followed the progression and said, oh, if he could raise Lazarus, then he himself could rise from the dead. Because this is the context of all. Chapter 11 records the reason of Lazarus. And it is because of all that why the crowd is now following him. But this man is born and following him. This man great. Oh. You know, I remember the days in Jamaica where Joshua, Joshua, my double Joshua. You know who Joshua was? Michael. <laughs> Michael. Joshua, my father Joshua. And I know people right now who they don't call, they don't refer to him as Michael and call him Joshua. So they thought this was a Joshua. But she's saying, oh no, I am Joshua, but of a different sort. My mission is not wrong. My focus is not wrong. My focus is Satan. My focus is sin. My focus is death. And I am going up to die. What? So that's the end of it. I said, no. The writer of the Hebrew says he destroyed death by his death. <laughs> but they didn't understand that. He conquered it because he rose again. Mm -hmm. You can't imagine when he died, the, the devil must have said, I will get to know that's you. Mm -hmm. But three days out from the grave, he arose. Oh, it's... The mighty conqueror voice falls. Hallelujah! Yes. He alone. You're focusing on the power and the glory. And you're discounting. Even Peter, Peter said, No, what must you going to die? What are you talking about? No, you can't do that. Because in his back of his mind, you have to remain alive to conquer the enemy and crown king of Israel. But Pilate seemed to maybe understood more than that. You can remember? Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Pilate wrote, no, no, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And the religious leader said, no, Pilate, go on, you have to change that. You can't put that over it. Otherwise, I remember Pilate said, what I've written, I have written. Because Pilate was convinced that this man is no ordinary man. This man. He said, Pilate, no more afraid of Jesus than him. God, Jesus will be afraid of him. <laughs> what have they written? They were embracing miracles at the expense of the, what Paul refers to as fellowship of suffering. I want to know him. He said, the power of his resurrection. I want to become a form of love to death. I want to experience fellowship. I want to experience suffering like peace of God. They were embracing spirit and power while denying weakness. See, for them, you have to be strong and powerful. He is going as a lamb to the slaughter, mm -hmm. as a sheep before her share is this. 
So the Bible says, it emphasizes the fact that he is coming, gentle, riding a donkey. You know, the original talk about bringing salvation and all of that. But these evangelists were emphasized, want you to see. But he was coming, he humbled himself, and he became obedient unto them, even the devil. And because at the beginning, maybe you read it, but I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't emphasize that Palm Sunday is really Passion Sunday. It's the beginning of what we call Passion Day. Because it's going to lead down to his crucifixion and then his resurrection. So Palm Sunday, or oh, this is it, was the beginning of the day. Like he predicted, he was going to experience suffering, rejection, death, and then resurrection during that week. So Palm Sunday was also Passion Sunday. And he was not going to shy away from it. For three years, three and a half years, they avoided the conflict in Jerusalem. You know why? Because he had to remain alive to train those disciples to continue his ministry. And so he's not going to let people. Uh, you're going to be in the dictionary next year. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to, to, to unwisely do that. He had his mission of training his disciples so that they could continue. But when the time came and his hour came, the Bible talk about his hour came, the time for him to be glorified, and I like that. He refers to death as being glorified. Just like we refer to res be resurrection as being glorified. Because this is why he came. This is the only man who we born to die. And he knew it. And that's why he could boldly. And that's why he's saying to the nation, don't get afraid. This is why he's saying rejoice. But deliverance has come. Restoration has come. He didn't enter the city as a conquering lion, but the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace. And the scripture I just read, I read before I got up here in Revelation chapter 5, where the title deeds of the earth was to be opened. And nobody was qualified to open it. And they were weeping. And John says, I see the Lion of Judah and the tribe of David. And he went a step forward to open it. And the next verse says, I saw the Lamb seated in the center of the throne. So the Lion and the tribe of Judah, just like what you said in the book, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But notice where he is. Hallelujah. He's not hanging on a cross. Mm -hmm. I just pointed out his exalted. Mm -hmm. He is seated in the Holy he said that. He says, you guys fear the grasp of that. That I had to suffer before I enter into my glory. So Jesus was not worried. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And this is what makes it difficult for people to understand. But although he appears 
and weakness. But he is going to come out strong, victorious, glorified. According to Zephaniah 3, 15 to 17, the king of Israel was also the Lord. And this is what remember he says, the Lord is in your midst. So yes, they, when they ask, who is this man? I'm saying, then he's a prophet. And that was true, but he was more than a prophet. Mm he's -hmm. God. Well, become a man. And I heard it driving along here. He never gave up his duty. He was always God. Mm -hmm. Veiled in flesh, but God is he. He's a spotless Lamb of God, yes, but he is God. Who had entered into their midst. God was now in the midst of his people. And they didn't see that. What they saw was a man warrior. And they must have wondered why he's not riding a war horse. Why is he riding a gun? <laughs> but he's showing them what real power is. Not brute force and ignorance. God became king. The king of Israel is with you. On that day, you will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang down or hang away. The Lord God is with you. He is mighty to save. It's meant to say. So the king is the Lord God. What is the thing? The king is the Lord God. Jesus is the presence of God in the midst of his people. And that's true. Those are called the name. Emmanuel was being interpreted as love. And that's not only that's not only a Christmas text, but text for all times. God is with us. So the question is, how do you respond to God in your midst? How do you do? You yeah, know, some people run, 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 run. You know, I, I get to branches and oh, I'm telling you. The thing is, I says, be still. I know. Stop and think. What is inside that you can understand? Mary understood. She displayed what I call extravagant worship. I said, Mary, this happens, we didn't understand. Because, for one, women were not supposed to be visible in worship. <laughs> But she didn't allow the taboo to prevent her. She came forward because her heart was filled. She first of all understood who this man was. Remember, Mary, if you were here, my brother would not have died. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, Look, you need to understand who I am. I am the resurrection of the life. Mm -hmm. Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth! Yes. 
he was a sinner and servant. And because of interaction with him, she received forgiveness of sins. And she saw this as an occasion. Say thanks. And to worship. And she not only anointed his feet, but she took what was considered her glory, her healing, and placed it at the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her healing. Some people might look on and have all kinds of misguided idea as to what she was doing, but Jesus interpreted it. Or Judas said, no, why this race? Why? Why didn't we just sell it and give the money to the poor? But for the Spirit tell us that. He wasn't interested in the poor. He was interested in, you know, better on his own next year. You know, because he was in the habit of stealing from the purse. He was like, the Bible said, I'm not thief. Can you imagine that thief or command in a worship? <laughs> Jesus said, leave her alone. Because she understood to understand that I am going to die. And so she prepared this perfume to anoint my body, not just my feet, but my body. It's transparent words. What is the term? No hold, no hold bar, nothing, no hold back anything. She's not ashamed, she's not afraid. She just cast herself down and gave herself in much. Displaying what Bible refers to as brokenness. And God dwells with those who are broken spirit, contract heart and broken spirit. Offering the best gift, not a year's income, but a very life. The most expensive price tag. Similar to what Jesus was going to offer in Jerusalem. As Peter says, we are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, the Lamb, who was without spot and blemish. And when you think of that, is there anything to pass you for those who give? He gave his life. Mm -hmm. If you give a life to God, that's everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he didn't reserve anything to himself. He gave us, he gave it all. So, as we come to a close, As we think of King of Israel, as we think of him receiving crown, he was crowned king by his father. As he's on his way to receive maybe a second or third crown. From his thorns, he from his head, he stands his feet, sovereign Lord, that flows in the down. Let us make an offer where we are. And there it is. As Jacob did, 
to the time God revealed himself to Jacob in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God has revealed himself to us as king. Mm -hmm. As the one who is very subtle and lead. But rise from the dead and ascend to his father's right hand. Let us worship him. For in whom righteous said, Word the whole realm of nature, man, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing and amazing, so divine. Thou art my soul. My life, my own. Oh, he's not going to be satisfied. He's the best of all. Mm -hmm. Because if he's not Lord <clears throat> of all, yeah, he's not Lord at all. Mm -hmm. No one can fool you. Our spouse, our sister, our brother, we can't fool God. Mm -hmm. Because you can see in the innermost recesses of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And he knows what he can stand. Let's follow him in every sense. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Let's give him our all. By the hymn of the same well, might the sun in darkness hide mm -hmm. and shut his glories in when Christ, the mighty maker, died for man in his creature's sin. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross. Because the cross was looming tall and big before him, and he was heading for it, and nothing could prevent him. Because that was his father's will for him to die for us. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appeared, dissolve my heart in thankfulness. And then I I you and I are privileged this morning. Crowned with many crowns. The lamb upon the throne. Ark how the heavenly and ground. Or music. What's the song? Awake, my soul, and sing. Of him who died me, and daily must thy matchless skin do all the Because he was and is all his king. Before he was born, he was declared to be king. After he was born, he was king. Where is he that is born? Mm -hmm. For all his ministry, he was king. My God did recognize him. In his death, even the Roman governor said, This is Jesus of Nazareth, the king. And Paul said, No one to the king eternal, the mortal invisible, the only wise God. I heard somebody singing with us this morning as we worship, King of my life, I crown me not. Let's, if we haven't crowned at all. Darling, he might say, from him, with many thoughts.